Back in July, I got to Kennywood for the first time in three years. Almost three years to the day. And it was just my second time at the park. A lot had changed since then. Mainly, the 220-foot inversion record king of America being added to the brand new Steelers country. But I also never had the chance to ride Skyrocket. That was undergoing some extended downtime back in 2018. This time, I got a ride on everything. And now I want to talk about it. These are my honest opinions of the coasters at Kennywood. When you think of Kennywood, you think old wooden coasters. They have three that trace their origins back to the 1920s, though Thunderbolt was massively overhauled in the 1960s. Let's take a look at this one first. I got two back row rides in 2018, and I thought it was super smooth. Though on my second ride, there was a rough patch right before the lift hill. Nothing to complain about for a coaster this old. This time, I got a ride in the front, and it was even smoother than I remembered it in the back. If you're looking for airtime, there isn't much. But in the front of the train, as you pop into the lift hill, you get one mad, crazy moment of ejector airtime. It's very quick, it's very violent, and it's the highlight of the ride for most people. I don't like to put airtime aside, but the layout is actually the more impressive part of the ride. Dropping out of the station and climbing up the hill at the beginning, and then doing the same thing at the end, just on a bigger scale. And what's in between? This lateral filled double helix. The more I think about this layout, the more I appreciate it. And it's a slam dunk pick for the best Woody in the park, placing fourth of the eight coasters overall. Some of you may disagree with me here. Some people may go with the park's oldest coaster, Jackrabbit. It's very similar to Thunderbolt in terms of being a terrain woody, with all those drops and turns, and the lift hill being halfway into the layout. It's just missing that lateral section that Thunderbolt has. But one thing that Jackrabbit does have is the double down, and that is by far its claim to fame. It's the best moment of the ride, and you have to experience it in the back. I got a back row ride in 2018, and my one ride in 2021 came in the second to back. My opinion did not change. It's a nice little airtime moment, but it's not legendary. It's nowhere near the list of my favorite airtime moments. I'm sure in 1920, this was the premier coaster element in the world, but it doesn't really hold up. Without the wow factor of the double down, Jackrabbit's ride experience is pretty tame. You can appreciate it for being super smooth. You can appreciate it for being 101 years old, but that's as far as it goes for me. I slide this in at the sixth spot in the park. Okay, we're down to Racer, the Mobius Loop Racing Coaster, and you end up on the other side of the station that you started on. This is weird, and I think it's the only coaster that I've been on that does this. But that weirdness aside, I was super disappointed by this coaster in 2018, and it didn't do much else for me in 2021. I rode the back again, and I did notice the great pop of ejector on the last drop before the final breaks. That was kind of a jarring moment after a ride that was otherwise super mild. So it's got the racing factor on its side, and it's got that one airtime moment. So is this actually a better ride than Jackrabbit? I think it's pretty close, but I'll still give Jackrabbit the edge for its double down and the use of the terrain. Racer doesn't really have a train layout, and it's chock full of tiny drops and slow turns, so I have to put it as the weakest of the three woodies, and it ranks seventh in the park, just ahead of Little Phantom. I admit, I've never ridden Little Phantom. I was going to, but the thunderstorm shut down the park just before I could get on it. I'll still assume it's last place. Let's move on to the steel coasters, and kick this off with Exterminator. These Revershawn spinning wild mouses are everywhere, and I mean everywhere. You find a lot of these at roadside parks or county fairs. Their layouts are unmistakable, but this one is different because it's entirely indoors and has decent theming. At least, it has theming in the first half of the ride. This includes statues of exterminators and other stuff that reminds you of rats. The second half is just pretty much darkness. But when you're so familiar with these layouts like I am, it's fun to experience them without being able to see. I enjoy this coaster for what it is. If you get a good spin going, it could be really chaotic, and that's just enhanced by the indoor setting. I'm willing to put this at the number five spot in the park. Onto one of my new credits, Skyrocket. I was not expecting much from this. The original premiere ride Skyrocket from back in 2010, but maybe I should have. In 2018, the park was waiting for a part to be shipped out, and I think it was down for almost a year and a half. I jumped at the chance to ride this right after Steel Curtain, and I was stunned to see that this thing was running two trains. That's very un would like These trains are okay once you're in them, but like all premiere rides trains, they're a struggle to get into. At least there aren't any comfort collars. Those make it even harder to twist yourself into the trains. I got the back row so I could get the max force over the hills. This turns out of the station and then hits a rolling launch, only topping out at 50 miles per hour, but that doesn't really matter. The layout makes up for it. You rise up and over the 95 foot top hat, but instead of flying over it, there are trims at the top that slow it way down and it kind of eases you down. But in the back row, you still get a nice pop of airtime. Next up is a cutback, which is fine. And then the zero G roll. 
This was ridiculous. I was flying out of my seat as we rolled into it, and I was out of my seat the whole time until we pulled out of it. It was definitely a whoa moment, and this instantly became one of my favorite inversions of all time. But Skyrocket isn't done yet. After the mid-course breaks, there's a very steep drop that will eject your butt out of the seat. A severely underrated airtime moment. But now the ride is pretty much done. It has a corkscrew, a few weak switchbacks, some slow and weak bunny hills, and then it hits the brakes. The second half is sad, but between the drop off the top hat, the zero G roll, and the drop off the mid-course, those are three great to elite elements, and those make this ride addictive, and it's something that I could ride all day. Because of this, Skyrocket takes the number two spot in the park. But Skyrocket wasn't the main reason I came back to Kennywood in 2021. That honor goes to Steel Curtain, one of my US bucket list coasters going into 2021, an SNS Hyperlooper unlike anything else in the world, and holding the inversion record in the US with nine. I'm not even sure what else to compare this to. Karnan? Cannibal? Kinda, but not really. That's why this is so intriguing. I went straight for it when the park opened, not only because it's their newest and most popular ride, but because I heard it only runs one train. But to my surprise, they were testing it with two trains. Then, before the ride opened for the morning, they took off one and went back to one train operations. I'm not sure why they did this. I'm sure they had a good reason, given the fact that it was a Saturday. It was in July, and two trains would have been ideal if they could have done it. But I was close enough to the front where it didn't really matter. I asked for the back row and the op gave it to me, which was awesome. I emptied my pockets because I believe that's what they want you to do. And with one train, I didn't have to worry about people taking my stuff. And then we were off, going up that insanely slow lift hill before cresting into the world's highest inversion, the Dragonfire Dive Drop, the first of nine inversions. So we have a brand new ride, 220 feet tall and 4,000 feet long, not only with nine inversions, but a ton of unique inversions. Banana Roll, Sea Serpent, Cutback, Zero G Stall. This should be awesome, but it wasn't. It was just okay. Honestly, it was forceless. It felt like riding a B&M looper with flat bars. It flips you around and has good speed, a couple good airtime moments, a long ride time. The stall was a very solid element, but when it was over, it just didn't do anything for me. People complain about its vibration or its roughness, and I felt it, but it didn't really bother me that much. It's probably rougher than a new coaster should be, but that seems to be a theme with new coasters these days. I don't hate on this ride. I just didn't love it, and it's gonna slide into the third spot in the park, it was honestly a tough pick between this and Thunderbolt, but I gave Steel Curtain the edge for its size, length, and unique elements. That just leaves one coaster, the easy number one pick at this park, the amazing Morgan Hyper Coaster, Phantom's Revenge. Yes, it is a short ride, but it doesn't really bother me that much. It does keep it from being higher in my top 50, but I never get off the ride thinking it needed more. It's a complete ride split up into two parts, heightened speed in the beginning, and insane airtime in the end. The whole time, it's using the terrain, with the second drop being the biggest one at 228 feet, and it's glossy smooth all the way through. This is the only coaster that I rode more than once on my last trip, scoring three rides. And on the first two, I didn't even have to leave my seat despite only running one train. It was pretty early in the day, and I think most people were flocking over to Steel Curtain, so Phantom had an empty station. I was talking about the addictive nature of Skyrocket's elements, and I can say the same thing about the finale on Phantom's Revenge. There is so much ejector airtime with those great lap bars. You just can't pass up a re-ride if you can get one. This year, that finale was still great, but it wasn't quite as violent as I remember. But it was also early in the day, and the train was maybe half full, so that could explain that. I also notice a nice pop of air when the train straightens out on the big drop, and a really sustained pop of floater on the hill that goes under Thunderbolt, and this one threw in some laterals also. I went back around for a third walk-on ride in the back row, because why not? This is the premier coaster not only at Kennywood, but in the whole state of Pennsylvania, some other observations about Kennywood this time around. People complain about the operations, and that's totally legit. I thought the dispatches were good, but the one train on Phantom and Steel Curtain is pretty insane considering it was a Saturday, but that seems to be normal for the park. In 2018, they had one train on almost everything also, and that was a Sunday. One thing that helped me and hurt me on this trip was the weather. It was kinda rainy in the morning, and there was a threat of a thunderstorm later on, and that did come through and shut the park down. So I had to leave early, but the crowds weren't bad at all. So I got on everything pretty quick. Kennywood has a policy where they let you into the park at 10.30, but they don't open the rides until 11. At least they're upfront about this. I appreciate that transparency. And I noticed people riding Jackrabbit and Racer even before 11, and Steel Curtain opened right on schedule at 11. This park has tons of shops with merch, but it's nearly impossible to find a regular shirt with the yellow Kennywood logo on it. I noticed this on my last trip, and then again this time around. It's such an iconic logo, and you would think they'd sell these everywhere but they either don't exist or they're extremely hard to find. 
So if you haven't been to Kennywood, I do recommend you go check it out. Classic woodies, steel monsters, lots of history, great terrain, and you can even park for free across the street if you're willing to walk. Tickets are around 50 bucks, which is totally reasonable for a park like this. Kennywood gets a lot of love and also a lot of hate, but I'm kind of in the middle, more on the positive side. It's definitely worth your time, and it's only a few hours from Cedar Point, so it's easy to go over there on a weekend trip. If you've been to Kennywood, let me know what you think of the park and what you think of my rankings of the coasters. I did this a bit different from a typical video ranking coasters. So here's the list again. Steel Curtain Below Skyrocket is probably the most controversial pick here, but let me know if you agree or disagree. And if you also put Phantom's Revenge number one, sound off in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. That's the best way to show your support for the channel. And if you're new here and love coasters, be sure to sub for more content just like this. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server, where you can chat with other fans of the channel, as well as my second channel, where I post copyright-free off-ride footage. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.